Hey guys, Gilliam Elliott here. I want to come to you guys today with another educational video about medical tourism. Now, today I want to go over medical tourism facilitator contracts and the importance of having a strong contract in place when facilitating patients. Now, before we jump into our short subject about medical tourism facilitator contracts, I do want to take a few minutes to go over what a facilitator is and what their role is in the medical tourism industry. Now, as a facilitator, it's your job to have great relationships with accredited hospitals, accredited accredited doctors and accredited clinics. In addition to having great relationships with licensed and accredited doctors, hospitals, and clinics, you also want to have attractive destinations and attractive countries that you're promoting for to get patients excited about traveling for these medical procedures. Now, after you have these relationships in place, then it's time to go on and look for potential patients who are looking to travel for healthcare treatment. Once you have a patient who's interested in utilizing your medical tourism facilitation company and interested in traveling abroad for medical tourism, now it's time to have a strong contract in place. And that's where we'll start our subject at today, the contracts. Let's go ahead and jump in, guys. Before you start promoting a hospital, before you start promoting a clinic, before you start promoting a surgeon or physician, you want to make sure you have a medical tourism facilitator contract in place. The same goes with patients. Before you start coordinating trips for patients, uh, before you start setting up arrangements and handling medical records, it's important that you have a medical tourism contract in place, like a patient contract, uh, a medical history form, patient waivers. These are all things in place to protect your company and protect your services as well as protect the patient. Medical tourism facilitator contracts will make or break your medical tourism company. Medical tourism facilitator contracts will determine whether you thrive and grow or whether you crash and burn as a company in the medical tourism industry. I really believe that medical tourism facilitator contracts are really what separate the great medical tourism facilitators and everyone else in the medical tourism industry. Now, as a medical tourism facilitator, there's a lot of things out of your control when coordinating a trip for a patient. And although they're out of your control, they can jeopardize the very being of your business. I'm talking about things like patients getting infections. I'm talking about things like patients having complications after the procedure. These are all reasons that you need to have a strong agreement in place, not only with the hospital, but also with the patient. The reason I tell medical tourism facilitators not to partner with hospitals before they have an agreement in place, the reason I tell medical tourism facilitators not to partner with surgeons and doctors before they have an agreement in place is because it leaves you vulnerable. It's the same thing with patients. You don't want to coordinate any patients before you have a medical tourism agreement in place. And I always advocate for this. And this is just so you can protect your business no matter what. Now, when it comes to patient waivers and patient contracts, your agreement with the patient is going to outline the services that you're going to provide to the patient as well as services that you're not going to provide to the patient. What I mean by that is you're going to let the patient know in this agreement that you're a facilitator. You are not a healthcare provider. You do not provide any healthcare treatments. You are not providing any healthcare uh, advice. You are simply organizing the trip for the patient. This so they have a clear understanding uh, of who's doing what. You're also going to have clauses in your agreement that lets the patient know that they understand uh, the risks that are involved with any medical treatment, whether that's medical tourism or medical procedures in general. This is all going to be outlined in your patient agreement in black and white so the patient understands what they're receiving and what they're not receiving from you. Now, guys, the reason why I said medical tourism facilitation contracts can determine whether you thrive and grow in the medical tourism industry or whether your company crashes and burns is because certain things that you put in your contract are going to outline and going to affect things like what quality of doctor works on your patients that you send to this healthcare organization. It's going to depend on how much you get paid or how much commission your, your company gets paid, when you get paid. Um, it affects a whole host of things. If something goes wrong, uh, who's liable? These are all things that are going to be outlined in your uh, in your healthcare agreements. And these are agreements with the hospital, as well as you want to outline that in your patient agreements. Now, when I say what quality of doctors work with your patients, I mean, you can have demands of who you want working with your patient as a medical tourism facilitator. As a medical tourism facilitator, it's your job to not only partner with credible hospitals, it's also your job to advocate for your patients that you're sending to this healthcare organization and making sure they're working with the best doctors and the highest quality doctors. And your agreement can outline this. Guys, you have to keep in mind that these patients are trusting you and trusting that you're working with credible hospitals, credible doctors, and credible surgeons. So you want to make sure your agreement with these hospitals and with these healthcare organizations outline what you expect when sending patients to their healthcare organization. 
Hey guys, thanks for joining today. I had a great time making this video. Um, I do think it's important for me to note that I am not a lawyer. Um, I do specialize in medical tourism, but I am not a lawyer. These are things that I've seen over the years. Um, I've worked with many lawyers on composing uh, medical tourism agreements. So I want to bring you guys uh, my perspective when it comes to these agreements and what they can provide to your company uh, and how they can protect your company. But guys, if you're new to the medical tourism industry uh, or you're looking to get more resources as far as medical tourism is concerned, or you, maybe you're thinking about becoming a medical tourism facilitator, um, check it out, Facilitator Growth Kit. It has all these contracts and much more. Uh, and when I say all these contracts, I mean patient waiver agreements. I mean contracts between hospitals and facilitators. Um, I mean agreements between patients uh, and facilitators. Um, everything that you would need to be successful in the medical tourism industry, this facilitated growth kit provides. These agreements were composed by lawyers uh, that specialize in international business, uh, as well as that specialize in medical tourism. Um, I've actually worked with a host of them on composing these agreements. You'll see a lot of people in the industry having contracts for medical tourism facilitators, but there'll be generic contracts. Um, these contracts were specifically made for medical tourism facilitators. Outside of these medical tourism facilitator contracts, we also have things like business plans for medical tourism facilitators. Uh, we have aftercare tools and other risk management tools for medical tourism facilitators. Our facilitator growth kit really encompasses everything that a medical tourism facilitator needs to be successful in the medical tourism industry. So again, guys, thank you for joining today and we look forward to seeing you on our next video.